Hey traders, John Howell here, and in today's video, what I want to cover is I want to cover the stock market, but more of a very long-term view, right? Like, what are those very long-term picture? What's the very, very long-term picture say, and um, and uh, and stuff like that. Also, the silver and gold markets. What to be covering that? Also, the correlation between the silver and gold. This is something that a lot of people have totally missed. A lot of people think, oh, silver and gold go up when the market crashes. And you just got to look at the facts for what is what 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 actually happened in two thousand eight, but but also what's likely to happen moving forward when it comes to the correlation of what's going on right now between the silver and with for the stock market silver and gold. So uh, I just want to share that with you. Also, I want to be looking at the crypto market and what I actually think about the crypto market right now. It's been absolutely hammered. But on top of all that, the thing that I really really want to uh, help you guys when it comes to this is is that. If you're worried about these markets right now, if you are fearful about these markets right now, then I want to talk a lot about about the best way to actually get involved with these markets. Okay, if you're looking to buy shares or trade shares or invest and so on and so forth, like what is probably the highest probability approach right now in the current environment? And um and I want to cover that as well too. And that's what I want to talk about the best way to get involved with these markets. If you if you if you want to get involved with these markets, the best way to actually do that. So anyway, guys, let's get straight into it. Don't place a trade based on what you're seeing in this video because there is no guarantees of making a profit in the market. It takes you a long time to become a good trader. So this video here is just to educate you to become a much better trader. Alrighty, traders, before I do start, um, I've just released a brand new course. It's 100 percent free. There's no credit credit card required. And in this free course, you got to learn things about like my number one chart reading technique that has worked since the 1950s. This chart reading technique helps you understand what's going on in the markets right now. Also, a powerful trading technique that, that, that tells you when the market's about to make a big move. Also, uh, in this in this session, in the, uh, let me just do this here, uh, is the deadly mistakes that's killing any chances of you, uh, of you being successful. Also, you're going to learn my number one trading system for the last 15 years that gets over 90% success rate. Also, you're going to learn, uh, there's an interview with my mentor there, how, how I made $2 million in one trade, and so much more. So go to johnsfreegift.com right now, and you can get access to all this. So I think it's about, about 13 or 14 videos over 12 hours long. It really walks you through everything. It's 100% free. There's no credit card required, but just get start getting the help you need right now so you can understand how to read the charts a bit better. Um, what are some good trading systems to start to approach these markets and so much more. So anyway, guys, let's get straight into the actual markets right now. And let me go through and make sure that I cover everything that I promised you at the start of this video. Let's actually go straight through it now. So the first thing I want to cover is the actual, the stock market itself. Now, what is actually going on right now when it comes to, when it comes to the actual stock market? Let me actually, let me actually open this up, up here. Let me actually go to the weekly charts. And uh, actually, let's, let's go to the monthly charts here for a minute. Okay, and in the on the monthly charts, we can see that what's going on right now. Okay, we can see how on the monthly charts that we have created a low, and now we're creating pretty much a lower low through here on the S S P five hundred. Uh, that's the on the Dow Jones. On the Dow Jones, you can see we've actually created almost a lower low through there. Uh, but on the S and P five hundred, you can see the S and P five hundred is where you know where where it's at right now with this here. Now, the interesting thing about that, what's going on right now is that, um, you know, guys, I'm gonna eat my humble pie here is that this market has come down a lot further than I originally thought. It's really caught a lot of people off guard. Um, and I have to give my credit to where credit's due. A guy named Peter on my, on my YouTube channel has been saying that we will hit on the Dow Jones, we will hit uh, 20,000 before we actually make a new high. And he was right. So you know what? I was wrong, and um, and he was right. Now, thankfully, and thankfully for me, is that my money is positioned. So even if we do get that fifty to sixty percent rally, which we will probably over the next few months, that even with that being even with that being in place, I'm still going to make money on my positions that I'm in the in the markets right now. But I'll talk more about that in this section about the best way to get involved with these markets. Okay. So let's actually go back to the monthly charts here. And as you can see on these monthly charts, right, we've we've actually we've really, really, really broken um, above. Let me actually go to this chart here so there's nothing on the chart here again. And we can see that that's what this is what's going on here, right? So you can see how we've had a massive, massive, massive move down. Now, if this is going to turn out to a full-blown, you know, complete downward move, then what's likely to happen with this overall stock market? So it's going to be the S&P 500. 
if we're if this is the start of a very uh, um a, a very long term move, what I mean by that is a twelve month, two year bear market, like pretty much most of the bear markets are, then what's likely to happen is one, we're likely to see a very sharp snapback, um around around say fifty to a sixty percent retracement of this move, maybe even higher. And then we're probably likely to roll over. And if we do that, if we can, if we, even if we drop down a little bit more, right? If I draw my trend lines here, you can see um, that's, that's the 50% level. There, that's the 60% level. Let me delete some of these trend lines off here for a minute. Um, that's the major support level, right? So even if we dropped here for a little bit more down to this major resistance level here, which I actually think we'd probably, probably have a pretty good chance of actually doing, because it's actually not that far where we are right now. That's a capitulation mode. Um, and once again, guys, I am eat my I am eating my humble pie because you know what I came out and said that that this market looks like it's about to make a new high. Um, I still do believe we're probably we're, we're probably we we will make a new high, but it may be for a couple of years. <laughs> but that's okay, right? As I said before, that I've been smart. I've been saying something, but I've been very smart about the way that I've been involved in this market. So it's all good either way. <laughs> um, so. So we see what's happening here, right? We've got a bit of a support down here, but what even if we if we do get a one last final push from the high to the low, we've got what what have we got here so far? If I go back to the daily chart, and we've got this gap here, um, we, we've got uh, here we go. Um, let's do this here. So um, <laughs> my 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 um. My battery has actually died in my mouse. Now, <laughs> now I'm coming back and I don't even know where I was. Anyway, that was like 10 minutes for you guys. Uh, for me anyway. Um, so we, we see see where we are right now, the Dow Jones. The Dow Jones has probably a really good chance of actually breaking down towards these levels through here on the Dow Jones. And the S&P 500 looks like we may, be get, we, we may get one sort of last final capitulation move uh, down through to here. This will be the major level of support. But as I was saying before, guys, that... That's happening on the short term. We're probably likely to see a bit more of a capitulation move on that. But once that happens, we're going to see a very sharp and very violent snapback from that. Okay, and then we're probably likely to see a fifty to sixty percent move up. So, if we do start to see this thing, we start to see this here from the high down through to say the low. So that means we're probably like even if we start to form a bit of a bottom here, but right there the 50 to 62 percent maybe even more i would say we're likely to rally back up to at least the 3000 level of where that resistance level is uh once we do get that snap back so if we hold here we're probably likely to run to the 3000 level maybe even higher um, but if we do get a bit more of a drop down through to here again probably a the snap back was probably likely to happen through there so that's looking at the overall picture right now guys uh once again i am positioned here so if we do get a drop down through here and say by the end of this year, we do get that snap back, okay? Um, that's where like, I'm still gonna make some money out of my positions. Um, so I'm good with that when it comes to that. So that's what I'm looking at there for the longer term picture. But the thing you wanna look at, right, is that if we do hold here and then we go up and then we round and then we and then we start to rally down. Let's go to that weekly chart here for a minute. If this is the first leg down and then we start, because we're, if we do drop down, then we're likely to rally up. The market takes time, right, for it to form tops in the market. So just like if I go back and if I go back and share with you, actually, you know what, I won't do that. So it just makes sense, right, that if we do get a drop down, we're probably likely to see a very sharp, violent snap back from here. Um, once we do, even if we drop down a little bit more, but once we do, we're still probably likely to rally up, up into this level up through here. Probably do a little bit of that. And if this is going to be, if this is going to be a one final top before we see. A, a a one to two year bear market, then we'll probably rally up and then we're probably likely to start to see this move coming back down. Um, so that's why I'm saying like a sharp snapback um, is, is likely to happen. And if that happens, you can see how this would then create a final top of the markets, right? Because when you go back in history, does the market just go down and then straight down and straight down and straight down and straight down? No, it doesn't do that, right? Yeah, we may get some violent sellers like we're here right now, but then we're probably likely to see a, a very violent snapback and then if it's gonna create a rounding top from here, then you've got this whole shoulder, head, and then right shoulder. And then, then, then the market, if we do create that, and we break this low through here, that's where I can see, let's go back to the monthly charts here. Then if that happens, then I can see this thing getting back down to around about 
this $1,600 level would be my target through there. So uh, yes, guys, I am changing my tune because I'm just, uh, instead of going on based on my thoughts, which sometimes in the past I have, I'm going based on what the markets are telling me. Right now, the markets are simply saying, hey, we're in a very big downward trend. Who knows where the bottom is? We could get a bit more of an overshoot, but when the market does snap back, it's gonna snap back very hard and very violent. And if it's gonna be the top, then um, then we're gonna then then we're gonna see and we're gonna talk about what we what, what I just said through there. So let's um <laughs> let's um let's let's go through and uh, talk about this here. I'm laughing, guys, because it's just like you know sometimes you get it wrong and sometimes you you get it right when it comes to these these positions here, and um and that's why overall, guys, really doesn't matter. You know what I mean? Um, but I'll talk again. I'll talk about that in the best way to get involved with these markets here. So, right now, silver and gold. Gold has continued to really hold where we are right now. Um, you can see what's really going on here with gold. We're really holding this level here, We're still below this overall trend line through here. We did make a bit of a double top, and now we're broken back down. So, I'm really, really, really interested to see if gold is going to get back above this 1500 or so, and before we start to see this rally here. Now the, let me go back and let me bring up the GLD here for a minute. Now the, the thing that I'm really watching and really looking at with gold is this, is that right now gold has actually had a rally up and then a drop down and then we went through a massive sort of sideways movement through here, okay? Now we're rallying back up. The thing you want to watch out with gold is that, let me just erase everything off the screen here for a minute is that we had this major level of support down through here, right? Is that if gold does, if this is the monthly charts here, if gold sort of fails through here and then we get back below this 130 level and we start to really, really generate some selling down through here, then we could start to see another leg down breaking below these low levels through here in gold. Now, I'm not saying that's gonna happen. If I go back to the weekly chart, you can see where we're at right now, but as you can see, right, ran up, sold down, ran up, and then we're having a very violent sell down. So once again, guys, on this GOD chart, if we start to really sort of get back below this 130 level, I see if that happens, I see this thing probably running down to, a, to, to probably back down the down to the low levels down there of that 105. Now on gold itself, right, gold itself is this level through here, right? We've got this major level through here. So that the really interesting is like, do we actually start to see this massive sell-off that's happening right now in the markets? Let's go back to the to those monthly charts, so you can see what's happening here. So, but right now, guys, on an overall monthly charts, we, uh, overall weekly charts, we've got a low, high, low, high, low. We've got a retracement back down to this low. So, really, not much, nearly not no one really in control there. On a short-term basis, guys, I'm going to go back to this chart here. On a short-term basis, if we do start to get back above this 1550 level then I do see a rally in gold. So um, so that's that's what I'm looking at through there, guys, when it comes to gold. The silver is the one that I'm really, really sort of watching and keep an eye on for because we've had, we've got this, let's bring up this, uh, this, this SLV chart. We've got this very strong sell-off through here. And as you can see, we've been sort of squeezing down and now we've got this very strong movement on the downside, as you can see. So it'll be really interesting to see what actually happens through here. Do we hold and continue down? Because we've got a bit of a gap through here. So um, we, this, this could be either be a breakaway gap or a bit of an exhaustion gap. And it's really hard to tell right now. But if we continue down, we're probably likely to continue down around about that $9 level. Um, if we do hold and then we start to rally back above, then this could be a very, very, very good buying opportunity for silver before we start to see um, the move up um, in the actual SLV charts or the silver charts as well too. So silver could be a very, very good buying opportunity. Guys, um, uh, right now we're still we're still breaking below these lows through here. But if we do create a final low where we start to break back above, man, oh man, we could get, we could get ready for a really, really big move. Now let's actually look at the correlation between the stocks and actual gold itself. And a lot of people have, have continued to think and this is where thinking is very, very hard, uh, a very, very bad thing to do when it comes to the stock market, right? Is that they think, okay, stock market up, silver and gold down, right? And silver and gold down, stock market up. So when we actually look at that, okay, when we actually look at that and when we actually look at the actual, the, the correlations is that 
in the past that if you have a look at say 2008, what actually happened with silver and gold? What happened with, with silver back in 2008, right? The entire move down or when the stock market was going down from 08 all the way through to start of 09, what did silver do? It went down. If I go to the GLD or even the gold, uh, let's go to GLD. All right, uh, it won't go back that far. Let's go to the monthly charts now. All right, so what actually happened here in so the market actually went for a run. So this, this is interesting, right? So silver and gold is already, sorry, gold has already gone for a run prior to this market coming down. And as you can see, right, throughout the start of 2008, we actually had a very, very sort of violent move down. And then after that, we went through a big run. See that through there? So it was after the 09, as the stock market was rallying, so was gold. If you look at the SLV, same thing, right? As the stock market rallying, so did silver and gold as well too, right? So that's what we're looking at through there. Um, so if we are gonna go in through a multi-year bear market, then I wouldn't be too surprised if we're gonna see a if we're gonna see a twelve month of an overall bear market, where right now the market's dropped, and if we do get that snapback, which we're probably likely to get to, uh, 50, 60 percent, and we start to roll over, then I wouldn't be too surprised to see the metal is actually getting hammered as well too. Now, that's just my guesstimate. No one knows what's going to happen. The best thing you can do is watch the charts. People say, oh, the charts mean bullshit. No, that's the best thing. You, the only thing you can do is watch the charts, right? Because the charts are going to give you some probability of what's likely to happen, right? Because there's no certainty what's going to happen. So you little pumpkins out there saying, oh, you've just, you, you look at the charts and not the fundamentals. How can I, how can I, how can I look at the fundamentals and, and say, okay, well, the fundamentals are doing this. Let me trade the markets. Do you know how ludicrous that sounds? Anyway, I'll get, I'll get into, I'll get that into a bit, bit later on. Let's, one thing I want to share with you guys is the actual crypto markets. And one thing I do see with it, when we come to an evolution, sort of what's happening here on an evolution basis on us is this, is we saw in the tech bubble, right? The tech bubble happened in Tech boom, tech bubble, that sort of stuff happening, what, 2000? And then the, then, te then the tech bubble crashed, okay? Then what actually happened, right? For the, and then for the next 10 years, the tech bubble, aka the internet, uh, was really starting to heat up and becoming a major part of our lives. Now, if you look at the evolution basis of what's going on in our lives right now, um, we know that there's gonna come a point where they can't keep printing money and they're gonna devalue the currency that much where we're probably going to go to more of a digital currency instead of like, you know, money or currency or paper or what we're using right now. We could probably see that, right? So the whole thing about crypto, right, and a digital currency is just that, right? Is that probably uh, the, for the last 10 years, we went through the boom and bust, just like the tech bubble with the whole cryptocurrencies and stuff like that. So we had, we had the, we had, we had the tech, okay, we had tech, we had internet, but then we had these companies that went through the boom and bust. This is exactly what I, this is exactly what's actually happened with, uh, with. Uh, let me just bring this chart over here. You know, with all of the cryptocurrencies, right? So if we go back and have a look at this daily chart of Bitcoin, we can see Bitcoin. Obviously, you know, uh, let me just bring this over here a bit more. There we go. Right. So we can see what's going on here and what's actually happened here with 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 Bitcoin and so on and so forth. Now, if I go. Let me bring up this weekly chart here for a minute. Now, if I go and I bring this chart up here, on a, on a big picture basis, what's what's going on on here with crypto is that I do believe that there's going to be a handful of these cryptocurrency, just like IBM, just like Microsoft, you know, just like these companies out there that started that are going to do tremendously well over the next decade. They're going to be buy times of their lifetime right now. Now, just like Amazon, right? And so on and so forth. So, but we never know which ones are gonna be there, uh, which one's gonna be that there. It may not be, people think, oh, Bitcoin because of X, Y, Z. No, who knows what, what cryptocurrency is gonna be. But my thoughts on the cryptocurrencies and the whole blockchain and, and all that sort of stuff is that I do believe there is going to be a cryptocurrency out there that becomes a, or a cryptocurrency or even a digital currency, maybe the government create, that's gonna be a digital currency. And then all of that's going to be it's like a one world currency then, right? So the the evolution that I see with it with the whole cryptocurrency is exactly following the following the whole cycle of the of of the of the internet and the and the dot com, right? What actually happened 
was once again the, the whole dot com happened we had the boom and bust of all these companies the tech bubble everything started to sort of slow down and then a handful of those a handful of those companies made it and they really 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 did really well now which one of those companies i don't know but crypto can crypto is going to be the next biggest thing to actually investing over the next whatever years right next uh you know the next the next 10 years um and so and so you know um so that's that's what i want to say about the crypto but there are there are a lot of things out there guys that i am looking at so for example like xrp if i bring up xrp here for a minute um oh that was actually the monthly charts let's go to the weekly charts here right so if i'm looking at say xrp i'm really liking xrp i like for some reason i, I i'm liking this one here we've got bitcoin there but if i see xrp right we've, we if we have a look at this here i can see how we've had or we do have this long-term long-term downward trend from there to there right from there to there actually you know what it's probably from there Right, so we've probably got this massive sort of downward trend line through here, through there, through there. We also have uh, the horizontal line coming down. There's a horizontal support and resistance level through there, as you can see. Right, we hit resistance here, hit resistance here, and now we're breaking back down. So this is on a weekly chart, remember, guys? Okay, so we're hit, we're really, really breaking down here with with with, with XRP. Is that the time that XRP starts to really sort of generate so, some? some sort of uh, maybe bottom action is that we want to start to see this thing hold through here and start the rally back up and get back up into the 35, 40, 45 sort of sense because that will probably mean that this is a bit of a final bottom and then we're probably likely to see a very big move coming out of uh, coming out of the XRP through there. As in for Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin's, a, Bitcoin's a hard one, right? Because there's really no, there's nothing... There's nothing going on here right now to say this is uh, this this this. There's no strong sign here, right? We could we could get maybe some form of a false breakout. We've got this low point through here. We flush down. If if we do continue to hold through here and then rally back up, this could be a bit of a false breakout to the downside. Um, and then we may see this continuation of this move back up and Bitcoin going from there. And the last thing I want to talk about, guys, is this is the absolute honest truth about what i'm about to talk about here is the best way to get involved with these markets this is a bit of a plug for that free course because it's a free course when you when you click when you when you get that when you get when you get the free course just below here you're going to get access to the free course but i'm also going to give you, give you access to a training they're going to walk you through step by step my number one trading strategy now if you're looking to get involved with these markets here and and how to, how to t sort of time these so, uh, uh, sort of understand the cycles we're at right now Firstly, we have had the move down. We're probably likely to see a bit more of a move down uh, out of these out of these markets through here. Um, and so, but there will come a point, probably very very shortly, that we're going to find some form of a short term bottom, and then the rally, the fifty to sixty percent, maybe even more, and over, overshoot there. This rally is going to be very sharp and very, it's, a, it's a very sharp snapback. Okay. Um, now that may take two or three months to happen. That may take that that may take you know. It may take one or two months to happen, right? The, uh, the, the rally back up. Now, that's that's what we're probably likely to start. That's what we're probably likely to start to see. Um, so, once again, guys, we're probably likely to maybe find a bit of a bottom somewhere around about here, or maybe a bit more downside, and then we start the rally back up, which takes a few months from there. And if we're going to roll over there, we can just take it day by day by day from there. Um, so that's when we, when we're looking at sort of buying this market right now. That's what's probably likely to happen from there. But the, the whole thing is when the market starts to rally, like with my positions I've got, once we start to get to a fifty to a sixty percent retracement, um, and if that happens over the next four or five months, guess what? I'm going to generate. I'm going to make money because I've got positions where we are right now. So if that happens, um, then I'll probably start starting to get a lot out of a lot of the positions I'm in right now that I have options on the spy and some other companies as well too. All right. So we're probably likely to start to see that. So that's when we just sort of talk, talk about sort of the investing type of approach or the or, or the way we're looking at there. Now, the best thing that I can say to you is, and the way that me and my private clients are crushing it right now in the markets is that we, whenever I do these update videos, right, I never do these update videos and and completely just simply buy the markets and all that sort of stuff and and. And, and what and, and do that sort of stuff and what i'm saying there is that 90 percent of my actual involvement with these markets 
comes from just simple a trading system, okay? And again, you'll be able to, you can get access to all that for free. Just join the free trading course and all that sort of stuff. You can check it all out. Um, now, the thing is this, guys, is that the best way to get involved with these markets, instead of guessing, okay, this is when the bottom's gonna be, or this is when the top's gonna be, and trying to guess this and trying to guess that, just understand that the markets are gonna be here for a long time. The question is, are you? Um, and then the best way to get involved with these markets is just have some form of a trading setup that you believe in and only wait for that setup. So that means like, like for example, I'll give, you, I'll give you an example here, okay? I have one of the most highest probability trading systems on the planet, all right? absolutely on the planet. In fact, with the way that I trade these markets, that if you get a perfect setup, you're very hard to find a trade that doesn't work and that doesn't run on for a nice profit, okay? Again, you'll be able to see all the details to that when you join the free trading course and then you can get that get access to that training as well too. But the thing is this, guys, is that what stops traders from doing well in the markets long term, right? Not just, oh, well, I missed the crash here. I'm not, I've am missed, I've missed out, right? I've missed out, I've missed out, I've missed out. Fear of missing out. Is that, no, we didn't miss out on anything, right? Like with me personally, it's like, no, I'm going to be in these markets for a long time. Why? Because most of my trading, 90% of my trading is done from a trading system perspective, meaning I have a set of rules. I'm waiting for a pattern to set up. I'm waiting for the right entry candle. I'm, 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 I'm getting in when I should, and I'm having good risk management when I should, and so on and so forth. Right? All these approaches, this approach to the markets, is just that, both bullish and bearish setups. So, But the hardest thing for traders, and I find with some of my private clients right now, is that when things go quiet, when there is no good setups, they get sort of frustrated. Now, with my private clients, so they were a bit, they were a bit sort of, um, uh, what's the word for it? They were a bit spoiled, right? Because January and February this year, we had a lot of really good trades, a lot of good trades that ran on for good profits and things were really, 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 really crazy, right? Things were, we did so well out of a lot of good trades. But this last 30 days, we've had we've had no trades at all. Or this, should I say this month, we've had no trades at all. This, this week, we could actually have trades, but this month, we've had no trades at all. But that's where most traders end up going wrong. And I've been telling my private clients every day, because I get access to a Facebook group where I'm coaching them all the time, is I'm telling them, listen guys, be patient. Don't be taking shit trades. Just wait for the really good setups. They will come, right? And so what stops traders from doing well is one, they don't have some sort, they don't have some form of approach to get involved with these markets um, and, and how to trade these markets. And secondly, your job, if you want to get involved with these markets long term, then your job is to find a trading system that you believe in, that you know that works majority of the time. Sometimes it's going to be losing trades. That's just part of parcel. Okay. And then you simply wait, you sit on your hands and you wait for that setup. There's no different to Warren Buffett. What does Warren Buffett do? He will wait and wait and wait and wait and wait and wait to buy these companies. Okay. Um, and so... The best way to get involved with these markets is to is to not try to pick the bottom, is not try to pick the top, is not tr not is not be jumping in based on FOMO, based on fear of missing out. Is the best way is to have some form of a setup, trading plan, trading system, and all that simply means really is a trading setup wrapped around with some rules that you'd like to see on the charts itself. People say, "Oh, the charts are useless." No, the charts are king. Right, the charts are king. Why are the charts king? Because you can't be trading based on a fundamental. That is absolutely useless. Right, absolutely useless. You can't trade the market. You can't get in and out on a on a fundamental. All right, why? Because we never know if the market's going to overshoot or not. Um, you know what's likely to happen is that the market's likely to rally two or three months prior to then the government saying that this pandemic or this whole virus is now contained. Right. The fundamental was, oh, everything's been contained. But then suddenly the market went up, you know, and so on and so forth. The best way for you to get involved with these markets is to have a system or a, a pattern that appears. You know exactly what the pattern looks like. You know exactly what the entry, entry candle looks like. And then you simply wait for that pattern. But most traders go wrong where they don't like to wait, right? They, they say, oh, it's so much. I could have made so much money in this crash. And dude, dude, that's the wrong thinking to do. And once again... Most people think that I'm getting my ass handed to me right now. In fact, I'm having a real good time right now. <laughs> I, I'm just having a really good time. Why? Because 
Firstly, I have a really high probability trading system. And secondly, is that I'm actually not trading a lot throughout the last 30 days. I've, be, I've, put, I've put on some positions, so they're expiring at the end of this year. So when we do, uh, over the next, say, few weeks to a month, when we do eventually get that snap back, that 50 to 60% retracement that we're going to get, guess what? I'm going to do well from those positions. But I only have a few positions on when, when it comes to that. The rest is sitting in cash, waiting for my trading setup. And when it does come around, I jump on it, and it's very, very, very good from there, right? Most trades do really well. And so that's the way you want to approach these markets is that is that we all trying to like, you got it wrong, and I got it right, and, and, and all this whole right and wrong thing with, with these whole markets. It is just the wrong way to think, guys, okay? It really, really, really is. Because if you do that, you're going to do your head in and if you do take a trade and, and you lose money, it's like, oh man, I got that wrong. Okay, here is the here is the, the the bigger picture with the whole trading thing. You must have a trading system, right? That has a win loss ratio. But every trade, if you have a trading system and you take a trade, you can never know upfront which that trade is going to be a win or or a loss. Why? Because the trading system has a win loss ratio. Every trade you take with that system is built is has a random outcome. Right? Is it going to be part of the loss and the loss ratio or the win and the win loss ratio? You never know. But most traders try to pick and choose. They want to try to know which one's the winners there. And the one they do think is going to be a winner ends up being a loser. And the one they don't think is going to be a winner is going to, ends up being a winner. And so on and so forth, right? So you have a trading system. You, you take that trading system every time. And every trade you take has a win loss ratio, which means it has a random outcome but it's built in with the probability of an outcome. And the only way for you to see that outcome is if you take, say, 10 or 20 trades of the exact same trade every single time. And over, say, a minimum of 10, but probably a good basket of 20 trades, if you take one system and you take 20 trades and you apply the same risk management, the same entry, the same exit, and all that sort of stuff, you will get your win-loss ratio. You'll also get your average loss and your average profit. Make sense? And that's how you can move forward in a big way there. But this whole right and wrong, it's like this guy got it wrong, this got it right, and right and wrong, and so on and so forth. That's what not that's not what trading is all about. Trading is never about right and wrong. Trading is all about, okay, I have my system and I'm gonna take it. And if you are not applying this this approach to the markets, meaning you have, if you're just simply just a seat of the pants trading right now, like I'm gonna short this market because I think it's gonna keep going down. Um, and that's the way, that's all your trading done and you're throwing a whole bunch of money of your account at these markets right now, I guarantee you, you are going to get your ass handed to you. Big, big, big time. You're going to get your ass handed to you. But if you're having the approach of, okay, I understand that, uh, okay, I have a trading system that I believe in and I understand that if I do get into trades, even with mine, it has like a 90 plus percent success rate, that's sometimes I'm going to have a loss. So therefore, I'm, I must get into this trade that this is okay. This has a high probability of working out, but if it doesn't, I've protected myself. Make sense? So for example, like if I give my example, I'm in a couple of low, sort of long. I'm in a sort of couple long term positions in the actual stock market right now, right? And so if those positions end up, you know, they're options trade. So if those positions end up expiring worthless, guess what? I'm still good to go because I've got like you know 80 percent of my money or just under that still in cash in my account. So if the whole world goes belly up and I'm, I'm still okay, good to go. Makes sense? And then and then I'm still waiting for my trades. So the way that, the, and that's the way the long-term, the long-term successful trader understands that it's not about making money every week or making a certain amount of money every day or every month because what happens with a real trading system, right, is that the trading system has a pattern and that pattern or that setup May one month you may get ten of those setups come around and have a very active month, and the next month you might only have two. The next month you might have five. The next month, next month you might have none. Then the next month you might have none again. See what I'm saying there? And suddenly, before you know it, and then in those times when there's no trades, that's when you start to really, really heat up. But if you look at your trades overall over a twelve month period, just be patient and wait for your setup. Now, whatever it is, if you don't have a setup, then again. Join that, join that free trading course. You're gonna learn, first, you're gonna learn all about the actual markets in the free trading course. But then secondly, you're gonna get access to my trading system. Whatever it is, whether it's mine or someone else's, just get some sort of approach that you're doing and don't get involved with these markets like, oh, I've been getting a bit of getting, a bit of getting, a bit of getting, oh my goodness. 
Because that's where most people are losing their shit right now. Well, I'm not, right? I'm just simply what? I wait for my trading system. I wait for my trading setup. I get in with the understandings that this actually may be a losing trade. And if it is a losing trade, have I protected myself? And as long as I keep doing that, most of the trades are profits. Some are losses. When I do have losses, they're small. When I do have profits, they're much bigger than my losses. And my account keeps growing overall. That is the best way to approach these markets. Anything else, guys, you are gambling, you're wishing, you're wanting, and there is there is no probability. There is no probability on if you're taking five trades based on five different things, where is the where is the consistency with that? Where is the probability with that? I'm buying right now because I I'm short the market right now because I think it's gonna go down. I'm gonna buy gold and silver because I think they're gonna go up when the market crashes. Do you see what like or I I'm, I'm gonna I'm, I'm, do you see what I'm saying there? Like there's no consistency there. So the best way to do it, okay, the best way to trade is find something that you believe in and then just stick to it. Your problem is that. You're so impatient that you want to make a lot of money right now that even if you do wait for it, you're probably like to load up uh, and do a lot, a lot, a lot of bad trade management within that system. So you can actually take a really successful trading system with bad trade management and blow it all the way.